are such an asshole. All right, continuing to bang him out over at assholeconsulting.com or meaning thing, stuff, money, to jokes, haha, feminism, all that other good stuff. And we got a, a request from a guy, and I charged him a lot of money because it needs to stink. Because I don't think, well, no, I don't think. I know for a fact, unless people pay a price and suffer pain, they will not listen, let alone make changes. So this is a somewhat of a simple question, but a complex answer. We're going to help the guy out. My name is Anonymous. No reason I identify you. Uh, 22 years old. I have a friend that has received consulting from you. I believe you are a great contact because he has changed. His name is, we also keep him anonymous. I figured it was a great idea to contact you because I have a problem with getting women as hard as I try. I can't figure out why they are not drawn to me as they are to my friend. Find someone that could help me channel that attention that anyone could stumble upon like the skill my buddy has drives crazy. Maybe English is not his first language. Uh, it's an attention thing that he uses as an advantage from the desire of whatever the desire might be. How do you make women be around you? I want to know why it's impossible for me to have women get drawn to me. I think English is his second language. I know it's not about being agreeable, aggressive, or intentional. Whatever system I'm using is simply not working. I'm getting mentally sick, Aaron. He spells nine to me. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're pretty good English. Logic, you use paragraphs. That's better than the average American. Uh, whatever system I'm using is simply not working. I'm getting mentally sick, Aaron. I need to get laid, please. All right, well, go to Amsterdam. Go to a brothel. Go to sick. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. Like, look, we'll interrupt and we'll go on to the rest of your request. Look, guys. How do I get laid? Okay. It, it's like Disneyland or um, prom. Or I'm trying to think. Uh, it's something you've never experienced before, and therefore you don't know what its value is. And while well, maybe Disney World, if you're a little kid, that'd be very exciting. But sex is the most overrated thing to a virgin. You're like, oh my God, I got it. Well, well, yeah. And then you have like, that's it? This sucked. Um, and I can't, I can't convey that to you until you have it. That's the paradox. Until you have sex, you're not going to realize just how overrated, and maybe not overrated, but how way more big than it actually is uh, for you than anyone else. Uh, so... To, to the clients I've had that have had issues with getting laid, let alone the girls, uh, just go pay for it. Go. go, go. And I don't know what country you're in, uh, but get on a plane. This would be probably the most important thing for you to do. Get on a plane. Find a reputable, legal, which is what I'm recommending, Amsterdam. Or maybe if you're in the United States, go to not Clark County in Nevada. <laughs> Pay a girl to take your virginity and be done with it. And then be like, oh, because ultimately that's the fear. It's like getting in a fight. Your fear is that you're going to get hurt. And it's not until you get punched in the face do you realize, wait, one, I'm still standing. Two, I'm not crippled. Three, oh, fuck that guy. I'm going to kick his ass. It, it's the fear, like having the bully. You know, and you never fight the bully because you're afraid to get the crap kicked out of you. You don't realize that the fear, living in fear for all those months, years, or whatever of the bully, instead of getting the shit kicked out of you and standing up to him and maybe making him pay a price, even though you pay a higher price, that fight, that pain is going to be less than you living in fear of the bully. And it's the same thing with your virginity. Stop living in fear of what, just go get it done. And then when you're going to realize is that's it. That's all it is because I'll tell you this. When you're younger, you don't know what women are like. You don't you haven't had sex, you haven't dated, you don't you don't know. Maybe you had some but you know you really would like to have that. Uh so you don't know. Uh then also it's the expectation in your mind of what it could be, right? And and and, and it's not until you actually get it do you realize oh it's nothing. Right. So I and, and that fear, the unknown completely 
misallocates your concern, your resources, mental, physical, psychological, maybe even financial, to get some that you haven't tried yet. All right, so stop living in fear. Just go get laid. And then as you get older, because you're younger, your hormones are high, it's unknown, it's novel. Over time, and as your testosterone goes down, or you just date them, you're going to realize, wow, not only they're nowhere near as amazing as you thought they would be, they're actually kind of a pain in the ass. Now, at least that's here in the United States. I don't know where you are. I'm going to guess not here in the United States. But generally speaking, it's like the kid going to Disneyland. When you're six or seven, oh, boy, Disney, I want to see Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and Goofy. Well, by the time you're 17, you couldn't care less about Disney. You want to go to Alcapoco or maybe in your case, Ibiza. All right, so you got to get over that. They're not that great. And the most quickest direct route to take away this angst, you know, you're mentally sick. The quickest way to end that is you actually get one. And the quickest way to do that is to pay for it. And by the way, in case you didn't know, y'all pay. Every time I've had sex, I've had sex with 32 different women. I've always paid. Not directly financially, not against, but I have paid for d dinner, dates, money, resources, time. It's like, you're going to pay. So there's no moral qualms, no moral or ethical issues because you are going to pay no matter what. So get it out of your head, get it out of your system and realize it ain't that fucking great. All right. Who's that? Wonder if you could help me find out how to make the women drool. I, I don't know how to make women. Okay. I know how. Be tall, be really ripped and in shape. I mean, and, and you're going to have to look like the Thunder Down Under or the Chippendales, okay? That's how you make women drool. It's a full-time job. You're going to work out. You're going to have to have a strict diet. Uh, that's the quickest way to make them drool. Otherwise, something that's way more efficient is to just pay for it. Just pay. And, and the, I mean, if you want... See, do you want to have sex or do you want them to be all in love with you? If I'm in love with you, that's a full-time job. You got to be outstanding physical shape. Outstanding. Then you get the women to be, they'll be interested in you physically, maybe psychologically and romantically. But if you just want women, you just want to have sex, pay for it. It's the most expeditious, efficient way. And that's what everybody does. Married or not. <clears throat> that you, that tool you provide to my friend worked a ton, a shit ton. Can you help me out? All right. I, so let's go through it. Um, we had a couple more emails. I want to see normal pictures. I joined Scientology. All right, no, 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 no. All right, here's the thing. You, you're a tall, pretty good-looking kid. You're in shape. You obviously do go to the gym. Um, you, as every 22-year-old probably has, you got a little bit of baby face. And and that's that that's just that just comes with the ropes, man. Uh, you got a little bit of dirt on your lip and all that. Shave that off. You can until you can connect. You got you got here and here. You don't have it here until this connects. Shave it. Um, you're gonna look uh, older or younger, of course. But I'll, I'll tell you, man, it, that's the problem. You're 22 and you just look very young. You got baby face, and that's there's nothing you can do about it. But you are working out. You are in physical shape, but I think you're tall. No, you're in the United States. I see the mobile gas station behind you. Where are you? Can I tell where you are? There's palm trees. See yourself. You got a full set of hair? All right. Um, after I got kicked out of school from hypnotherapy, before the school of hypnotherapy, I went through a breakup in Mexico which may be very insecure about my qualities because all the attention I was giving, I actually didn't want to be with it. I've always been affected by the opinion of my parents with things that are involved in academics. Always petted me, B, but they always had a strong opinion about, okay, you got to learn to spell. All right, so we got some pictures. Just bear with me. All right, you've emailed me way too many times, so you you need to learn less is more. You might actually have a little bit of a, a mental disorder, and that's a strong word. Uh, you might be mentally off, okay? Because you're emailing me a lot, and I'm not a chick. And you're not picking up on social clues. 
um, and you're 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 aggressive and urgent, which actually works in an entrepreneurial field. I was very aggressive. I'd ask out like you know it, it was not uncommon for me to ask out five girls a day. Uh, and then I'd be like, hey, you want to go out tomorrow? Because like time, time, time. In my mind, it was time. I think it's just, you got to back off. You got to realize women operate a much slower, much slower simmering, as do everybody else. Um, whenever I try to initiate some with girls, I get the sensation of a person that is a pervert or a perpetuator. Well, no, that's that's normal to chase after girls. All right, here, here's what it is, okay? We talked about just going and getting laid. If, if you're in the South, what? yeah, actually, uh, you, I don't know, California, Miami, and not Miami, uh, Arizona, I don't know where you are, but go to Vegas. Do not go to Vegas proper. You have to go outside of Clark County. Just go get laid. So you got that done. Here's the thing. And you're 22, and I understand this is every 22-year-old. You're putting women at the center of your life, okay? Um, and And that makes sense. Because that's what you're biologically, genetically programmed to do. That's the number one thing in men's lives. But it is to the point that it is not only ruining your chances with women because you're so desperate. It's ruining your life. And what you and every young man, every man, every man, young or old, some old men don't even get. What you all got to realize is that <clears throat> the girls are not that valuable. <laughs> And if you put them at the center of your life, uh, it, in an ironic sense, pushes them away. And additionally, we also have to realize is that the value of your life, no matter how hard your genetics and your programming and your, your evolution is screaming at you, uh, it, it's not worth it. It really, not today, not in the United States, not in Western society. I know through the billions of years of evolution with animal and millions of years of human evolution, you have, your, your, your ancestors have fallen in passionate love. I believe that's coded into your DNA. You're passionate about the girls. But what every guy has to realize is their women are really overrated. They're really overrated. And I can't convey that to you until you actually go and date some. But in you being so desperate, with which drives away women quicker than anything else is, is desperation. You're never going to get to experience these girls and date them and realize just how not exciting they are. And ask any guy, any guy older, any guy with a little bit of a mustache and a beard with a little bit of gray hair, a common sexual behavior, for guys who have dated girls, we've, we've had plenty of experience with, they're not worth it. Ask your old man. Have a one-on-one, -on -one, an honest come-to-Jesus meeting with your old man. Say, Dad, how passionate are you about Ma? And he'll be, unless your Ma is like great and the most wonderful woman ever, he's like, oh, God, she's a pain in the ass. And you're blind. Your, your hormones, your genetic and your youth blind you. All you see, and this happened to me, It was I'll, I'll give you a fair play. It wasn't until I was 27 that I realized, oh, my God, these girls are worthless. Because I was teaching a class and there was a couple girls that I was like, bam, wait till they graduate. I'm going to bang them. And there was one in particular. I'm like, yeah, all right, this one. And I had this kind of like, well, I got to impress her. I got to be really good. And then, it don't, and then once I found out she was cheating and plagiarized, she got pissed at me for giving her an F. And then I saw her switch like that. I'm like, oh, my God, wait a minute. These are trailer trash. These are worthless quanta ha -has. These are not good people, let alone women. And if I were to marry that or chase, it would have been hell. And so since you haven't been on that side, you know, it's like kids going, like you watch war movies. You think war is glorious? War sucks. It really sucks. It's not fun. It's not glory. Well, it is glorious, but, you know, that's assuming you live and don't get killed or lose an arm or your eyesight. And girls, it's the same thing. Until you date enough of them, there's no way for me to convey the fact, not the opinion, the fact they are nowhere near as fun and awesome as they are in your mind. And so you're going to have to go and date. You're going to have to go and, and find out for yourself. All right? 
But the quickest way to do that, aside from the sex and paying for it, which you're going to do anyway, is to put yourself first. Okay, The quickest way to start dating girls, to get girls to hang on over you, is to not give a shit about them. And let's employ a little bit of economics, all right? Every girl on the dating profile, whether it's Tinder, Tinder, Bumble, whatever, all right, they're flooded with male attention, okay? And logically, ethically, morally, almost romantically, it's sad. Every guy assumes like, well, I like her. I should treat her nice. No, she's treated nice by literally thousands of men every day online. And here we have to introduce the concept of absolute value, where the absolute value of a negative number is its positive number. And it does make sense, and it's very sad, but because men have roughly nine times the sex drive of women, women get exponentially more attention than, than uh, uh, from men than men do women. They're sick of you. They're sick of nice guys. They're sick of guys giving them compliments because they get it every freaking day. Even if you got the world's greatest chocolate ice cream, you get sick of it. You'd get sick of it. And you wonder why, how do the bad boys get the girls? Because they tell girls to fuck off. Because their behavior is different. They're not constantly bowing down at their altar. They tell them the most powerful. You want to get girls? Tell them no. Now, <clears throat> there's a balance. You don't actually treat women like shit. It, you, and it's hard to do that. It, it's hard to treat women, but it's hard to treat anyone poorly, frankly. But when it comes to women, not giving them attention is more attention. Less is more. Silence is golden. Words are cheap. Words are copper. Silence is golden. And so if, if you want to get the girls, you have to not pursue them in an ironic sense. Okay. Now, where'd it go? Um, I pulled it up here. This is a, a great book. I'm going to recommend this even over my own. You need to read this. Okay, you need to read this book, even though it's written by Rich Cooper, a Canadian. You need to read this book, especially the last chapter. I'm not giving anything away here. And the reason you need to read that book is it is it shows you that chasing girls, now you're just one of the millions of men throwing her attention every day. And it's not until you go and focus on yourself, take all of the energy, think about this. You're in pretty good shape right now, so you got to hit the gym. What if you took all the energy, effort, and resources and put even more time at the gym or learned how to salsa dance or become a ballroom dancer or, uh, I don't know, became a really good mechanic? You improve yourself. And it's like kind of a win-win because in trying to ply women with attention and being desperate and fawning over them drives them away. If you take that time instead and ignore them, not only do you improve your situation, that's a, the only, not the best, it's the only way you're going to get the girls. And it's by stopping putting them at the center of your life and your attention and focus and instead replacing you with it. You pursue yourself. You improve yourself. You do everything you want to do and put yourself at the center of your own existence. And in living your life, you're going to do a couple, two things. One, you're going to ignore women, which is statistically rare. All of a sudden, your behavior is different. Like, nah, I don't date. Nah, nah I got I got to go to the gym. I got to go to church. Oh, dude, going to church is fine, too. Some, anyhow, oh, no, I got, I got the Masons. I got the Eagles group. Oh, no, I'm going to go for a run. Oh, I'd like to, but I got to. So you ignore girls. You don't go to party. You're still present, but you know. The second thing in focusing in on yourself is you improve yourself. And you turn yourself into a top 10% man. And what I would also recommend, in addition to the Unplugged Alpha by Rich Cooper, is you watch, watch Fresh and Fit. That's a podcast. Um, even though one guy's from Connecticut. Uh, watch their podcast and watch the behavior of women. And you're going to see what women want and what they get. They get constant attention all the time. And they have the delusional expectation because so much dick is being thrown their way. They can't discern or delineate from it. And then you will realize that to get the girls, you got to be an insanely top alpha guy. And the only way you become an insanely top alpha guy is not by going to the nightclubs or swiping on to the right. You go to the gym, which you're already doing, but then you become excellent in a career. You make some money. You become a great uh, 
athlete or tradesman, maybe get into MMA or some kind of fun. You could even become a, a great singer. I don't know if you got singing talent, what, whatever it is, you excel in something and you pursue your own life and you make yourself as your own individual man valuable unto anybody but yourself at minimum. And when you pursue and achieve excellence, you stand out like a beacon and separate yourself from the rest of the guys, which is probably what your buddy has done. But this obsession, which genetically, logically makes sense, that is what's repulsing women from you. The fact you have nothing else in life that gives you value aside from women means that you're just one of literally several billion men who want the girls. And you're going to waste your life to the point you might as well not have even lived because you're like living this life for other women who ultimately aren't going to be worth it once you date enough and find it out. So for your you have so here's how you get the girls. You stop pursuing them today. You don't waste another calorie of energy worrying about women. Not today and never again. And you go live your life. You become a motorcyclist, a rock climber, a a, a, a good chess player. Go do what you want to do and go do it. And I'm not saying you don't, if you see see a cute girl, you don't ask her. Another, I'm gonna add another thing to your homework list. Start watching Troy Francis. You're doing daytime approaches. Or not daytime. You're doing in-person approaches. You're not doing internet stuff. Right? But you have got to get your core. You have to build up who you are. I want to mention your name, but you must become you. So that when you go, you're like, I got other stuff in life to do. I have an opportunity cost for going out with a girl. Dude, if I was single, let's say the girlfriend goes away or she dies or we break up or whatever. All right? I have so much other shit going on. Now, I'm also older, and I don't really have that much of an interest in women because I've, I've dated plenty. There's so much other stuff I do than ask out a girl. So much other stuff. I'd write. I drink. I ride my motorcycle. I go hiking. I, I, be doing, I play video games. And if I really wanted a girl, I'd just go pay for it because I've, I've, I've dated girl. I know. I know. And then if a really cute girl came into my life and like showed me that she was the one that, which requires agency on, I'd be like, oh, she stood out. That's different. But you're going to find out after you date enough of them, after you sleep with enough, enough of them, 99% of them aren't really all that special. It's just your, your biology and your genetics and your, your, your gonad screaming at you. And all that time and effort and energy you wasted, as did I. Good Lord, how many hours, days, weeks, months I spent at nightclubs for no avail or little avail. When I could have gone to the gym, got a doctorate, built, built another property, built a property with my hands, joined the military, any other thing, I wasted a significant percentage of my youth on the pursuit, not the capture, the pursuit of women. And what women I did capture, it wasn't worth it in like 95% of the cases. But since I can't convey that to you, the quickest way to figure it out, watch Jack Napier. Red Evening, him and Rob, watch it, consume all this material and stop pursuing women and go become the most excellent version of you you possibly can. And once you do that and you stop worrying about it, you pay for it and you get laid and then you, it, you, but you have got to move the gravity, your soul focus from the pursuit of women, this addiction to obsession you have with women, which every guy does because that's your program to be and move it to yourself. You'll never be able to see them for what they are. And you'll never be able to realize how much of your time in your life you're wasting. Vainly pursuing these girls, when if you just focus on yourself, you become the center of gravity. Girls start to fall into your orbit. They start to chase you. Now, they're never going to chase you. They're going to imply and flirt. But that is, that is how you get the girls, is you don't chase them. You go and you live your life. You go and excel in certain things. If you see a girl, you want, hey, how you doing? But your your life is not like, oh, uh, the best part of my week is Friday. I might have a date. No, the best part of my week is I get to, uh, I don't know, go uh, go swimming in the Rapid Creek. I I get to go watch. A, I get to see a a, a seminar. A Jordan Peterson to speak. I get to see Jordan Peterson. It is not, I get a date with a girl that I don't know who is very likely spoiled and entitled and delusional about her expectations of what she wants in a man. And it is going to be a chore dating her. 
I here here's another thing, by the way. You just date enough, you realize when you're sick and tired of playing entertainment monkey because the girl just sits there, expects to be entertained, and is not engaged in the conversation. Oh, that's a fun time. That that will that that's real. That's what girls are like. They sit there. What are girls good at? They're good at sitting there and waiting for you to entertain them. And then when you re- and it's gonna take years, maybe a decade in your case. Huh, this sucks. I pick them up. They don't do anything. I'm nervous. I'm trying to talk to them. They don't throw the ball back. It's it's pulling teeth. That's women. And you'd be like, what? Wait, are they all like this? Yeah, they are. <laughs> well, not all of them, of course, thankfully, but most are. And there you go. That, And then you'll be like, oh, okay. And then the sheen will wear off, and then you're going to have an existential cr- question, not crisis question. Do I want to continue living my life for the girls, huh? Or do I want to live life for myself? Because I know this, every minute of my time I've invested in myself, I've gotten a positive rate of return. I'm going to go hiking today, never regretted a hike. I'm going to ride my motorcycle today, never regretted a motorcycle. I have regretted the literal thousands of hours I've spent dating girls who just sat there like a bump on a log and didn't do anything. And the pain and agony I had to go through to get laid by uh, almost three, three dozen of them, two score, not even two score, almost three dozen, uh, was totally not worth it. Totally not worth it. But I, you have to come to that conclusion yourself. You have to travel the path. You have to date enough girls. Oh, and by the way, we're talking girls back in the Gen Z, uh, Gen X days, which were higher. Frankly, uh, they weren't that high a quality and caliber objectively, but they're higher than the quality and caliber you got now. I don't know what hellish nightmare of tooth pulling you got to do to go get a girl on a date in the real world today. I cannot imagine at 22 what that's like. So th- there's my advice. Go pay for it. Go to Vegas. Drive outside of Clark County. Go to Pahrump. That's where it's legal. Among other counties, I believe. Check the laws. Get laid. Be done with it. Keep working out. And then never chase girls again. You're going to work out every day. Come up with a do list. How am I going to improve myself today? What accomplishments am I going to do? What am I going to study? Are you in the military? What am I going to run? Where am I going to work out? What's my bench press going to be? What's my military press going to be? That's what you do. And that's the rest of your life. And you have to give up this idealistic hope that there's some quality woman out there or women that are just going to fawn and drool over you unless you look like the thunder from down under that is not going to happen. And that is a full time job. And you're going to sacrifice your own personal self. I'm all for physical fitness, but I I mean, to get six packs and all that, it's borderline. It's not insane. It's not impossible, but it is a lifestyle choice. And frankly, I've not yet met a woman that's worth going and sacrificing my life like that. I've dated plenty of hot women. And usually the hotter the woman is, the more of a pain in the ass she is. But again, you don't know that because you haven't you haven't done that. All right. Any super chats? Sam Whiskey, five bucks. Congratulations on your new home, Cappy, but it's still smaller than Joseph Stalin's walk-in closet. <laughs> he was a socialist, right? Oh, I bet you he had nice cavi. I bet you he lived better than the than the proletariat. Everyone thinks they're going to be Stalin. No one thinks they're going to be the guy on the Gulag Archipelago. Uh, Wiz Division Productions for five bucks. But 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 Cappy, doth you protest that writing poems to Milady doesn't make it their pantaloons drop it to the ground with haste? Propos- no, you don't write. No, no, no. That was right back. It was on the switch. Like, ah, a poem would have been kind of cute and flirtate. Nope. No. Done. And I used to buy girls fly. Like, hey, here's the flowers. You want to go out? That was dumb too. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, it, it's sad. It's really sad. But you really do have to ignore girls. I mean, you flirt with them, you give them a little wink, but your mission is somewhere. You cannot indicate that your primary interest is that girl. You have to be like, hey, you want to come along? Like you're an ins- you're the sidekick. You're not my primary. You're not my number one thing. It it really is. It, it sucks. It sucks. I know all you guys, especially the old guys, I just wanted to treat a girl nice. I thought this would be clever and funny and witty, and it probably was, but they got nice. They got nice up the ass. They don't need any more nice guys. They need dicks. They need weapons-grade assholes. Uh, 
Uh, Andrew has two bucks. Nice video and all. But how do I get to girls? I <laughs> work out, be tall, be hot, and do not give them the time. Do not put them number one. Put them number two or three, probably four. But you do not put them at the center. They will smell that, and they know that you got nothing else in life. You got to have something else in life, namely you. And once you got your own shit going on, then the girls are gonna. They're not gonna chase after you, but they'll know that you're not desperate. And not be a stalker or controlling guy. Sam Whiskey, five bucks. Can't be too many girls got student loans. Yeah, that's another thing. Tell that to the kid. You know, I, I didn't ask what his degree was, but uh, he's obviously going to work towards something worthwhile. He's got, he's got the physique, so he's working out. So I, I presume he's industrious. This is the type of guy who wants to, you know, he gets the pussy. He's going to be addicted, and then she's going to run over him like a doormat. Kid, I'm not kidding. You got to get this book, the book of, I'm, I'm sorry, Unplugged Alpha. I guess you could get my book too, the book of numbers. This might provide some numbers or statistics, but I don't think it's going to override your uh, your horniness, your genetic programming. That's it. There we go. All right, questions and answers, assholeconsulting.com. See you guys later. Toodles.